Hi guys, and thank you all for joining uh, my session. Um, first of all, I'll in introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ben Blackburn. I'm a technical advisor with HCL Big Fix. Uh, I've worked with Big Fix for around six years now, um, and one and a half of those years, HCL have owned Big Fix. So there's been some continuity between IBM and HCL. So my agenda for today's session will cover uh, the history of HCL and IBM uh, and Big Fix. It will also cover kind of the uh, challenges a client would, would see in an endpoint management environment. It'll move on to what Big Fix looks like as a technology, the platform. Uh, additionally, the, the, the granular functionality that, that, that we license per module the finally the architecture and then i'll move on to um, a short demo to give you an understanding of the interface of big fix and how we may look at our devices and roll out some patches so big fix was founded in 1997 um, it was acquired by ibm in 2010 because they had um, hundreds of thousands of devices across Mac, Linux, Windows machines that, that needed managing globally. As of 2017, IBM entered into a partnership with HCL, whereby all the back-end development of Big Fix was done by HCL. So as of um, mid-2019, IBM sold uh, a number of software tools within IBM's portfolio to HCL one of those being Big Fix. So while the tool is new to, to HCL, they've owned it for a year and a half, actually HCL have been developing Big Fix for um, well over three years now. That, uh, that experience in Big Fix is, is more reflected in the personnel HCL. So myself, I have uh, over five years experience in Big Fix. My colleagues have five, 10, maybe 15 years worth of experience in Big Fix. So HCL, while new to Big Fix, uh, have a lot of experience. Equally, while it is new to, new to HCL in terms of ownership, HCL have taken massive strides to improve the technology. Uh, version 10.0 was released back in back in April uh, with some quite notable platform enhancements. Now, what does that mean for, for Big Fix users? Well, HCL have already doubled, uh, increased their engineering and development team by 100%, and they're actually close to increasing that to 150%. HCL as a company are very focused on uh, engaging with customers and users. So there's a number of masterclasses that we've rolled out. Uh, these were due to start last April, but due to the current economic climate, um, they were had to be moved from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to online sessions. So we have online user groups regularly, uh, online training, uh, currently free training as it happens, and masterclasses. And we also have regular webinars, um, Q and A sessions with the development team. Uh, weekly, if not once every fortnight, um, that are hosted live that, that users can join and ask questions of development team. Often there'll be a specific subject or a topic that we'll talk about. Maybe it's the technical language, maybe it's a, an installation, maybe it's some of the roadmap coming up. I'll show you what that looks like in a different, uh, in a different page. Lastly, moving away from how IBM used Big Fix, um, we're very focused on delivering RFEs, so enhancements for customers. Um, so if there are any uh, product ideas or enhancements that you would require, we can definitely look at those and look to integrate those into the technology. So the next question is, where does Big Fix fit? i.e. what problem does Big Fix try to solve? Firstly, as with every environment, um, customers have lots of software tools that do lots of software things. So they may have a patching tool for Windows, a patching tool for Mac, uh, a patching tool for their Linux estate. They may have separate tools for software distribution or uh, OS deployment or remote control functionality. Again, a separate tool for software inventory or a so separate set of tools 
for vulnerability management or security and compliance. Now, with all these separate tools, you have separate infrastructure in the back end, separate servers. You'll have separate agents running on the endpoints to, to send that data back and separate consoles, separate interfaces to view that information and likely separate teams, perhaps an IT ops team to view the day-to-day -day running of endpoints, uh, a separate IT security team to view the uh, security content and perhaps a separate soft asset management team to view that set of content. Ultimately, it means uh, separate tools, separate licenses, separate interfaces, uh, separate sets of data taken in at separate intervals, also separate servers, separate training, um, ultimately creating quite a complicated ecosystem for your environment. And when you do need to do something, you do need to react to an audit or you need to react to a vulnerability. The question is, where do you go? Where do you go first? Um, what set of data do you have is, is giving you the, the, the real truth? Uh, the knock-on effect of this, this disparate data means greater complexity, but also greater cost. The second challenge we see in the environment is managing endpoints. So historically, um, any user would have a, a set of servers, physical servers or virtual servers, uh, a set of desktops and laptops in an office, Nowadays, more people are working from home, more people are working remotely uh, in coffee shops, in airports, um, from remote locations, and trying to get visibility of these endpoints is, is very, very hard, especially when you are migrating more endpoints to, to cloud environments, perhaps. Trying to get a single view of all of these endpoints, of all of these, all of these um, client devices, all of these servers, all of this cloud architecture, regardless of where they may be ge geographically, makes managing endpoints very, very complicated, especially if um, computers are put in drawers or go on maternity leave or holiday, how to make sure these endpoints are maintained up to a standard that the IT team are happy with is critical. And with that, with the, this this maintenance of endpoints means that um, the harder it is to manage them, the more likely it is that they are vulnerable to attackers and malware. Thirdly, it's about how frequently do you get data on your endpoints? So if you are uh, running a scanning tool, then the data from that scanning tool is only as good as your last scan. You may do a scan on Monday morning and then do a scan a week after. But if there's a vulnerability as of Tuesday morning, then you've got a six day window whereby you have zero visibility of your environment uh, and therefore uh, zero visibility of what's going on. So how you manage that, that window of vulnerability and the risk that maybe, that maybe um, not having that visibility will entail it is critical, critical to the IT operations team, critical to management, uh, critical to whoever's responsible for feeding information around. So remediating and, and keeping that, that cycle as small as possible is critical. Um, ultimately, the, the people who are dependent on these endpoints, dependent on these endpoints being up to date, uh, correct data, um, you know, there's a knock on effect to everybody if they are at risk. Ultimately, we want to rationalize multiple OSs, Mac, Linux, Unix, Windows of, of various flavors, uh, different tool, tools to do different jobs um, in different types of environments as simplified as possible into one nice rational architecture that allows whoever needs to see the data 
uh, the ability to see it as quickly and as easily as possible. So that brings me on to the question of what is big fix? So big fix is a single comprehensive solution for discovering, managing roaming endpoints um, across Windows, Linux, Unix, and, and Mac OS. Essentially, uh, big fix is a platform. So regardless of the functionality you're using, the platform is always the same. That big fix server is always the same, whether you're managing Windows or Mac, whether you're looking to do patching or software inventory, that platform is exactly the same. As a result, we can use one server and one agent per endpoint to manage your ecosystem for endpoint management purposes, which means it's low cost because you don't have multiple tools. It's increased security because you have reduced infrastructure, fewer ports, and ultimately it simplifies the endpoint management. So I've got an overview of, of, of the modules of BigFix um, and the functionality they perform. So at high level, we've got BigFix patch, which focuses on patching endpoints, server, desktop, laptop, uh, point of sale machines across multiple OSs and third party applications. Now, the, the, the architecture of BigFix means that every endpoint talks in to the server every 15 minutes. So whenever there's an update, a vulnerability, you're looking to get an asset report, all that data gets fed back in to Big Fix every 15 minutes so you know your posture. Now, Big Fix patch is included in Big Fix lifecycle. And Big Fix lifecycle is focused around IT operations. So the day-to-day -day management of endpoints. So that includes patch. But it also includes uh, software deployment, um, OS migrations, so migrating from Windows 7 to Windows 10, for example. Or if you're rolling out new laptops or new desktops to a team, you know, how do you provision those images quickly and easily? Uh, maybe create a, um, a app store. For, for deploying software so users can pick what applications they want to use. Maybe they want to choose between uh, Chrome or, or Firefox. Automate tasks. If I want to uh, patch a cluster, I can create a, a method of patching in a specific order, running some, some services and checks pre and post to make sure that's gone okay, but also remote control capability for users that are working remotely. Now that's IT operations. Conversely, BigFix can also manage the IT security element of an estate. So that again, also includes patch. Now patch will tell you what endpoints need patching. BigFix compliance will tell you what vulnerabilities are associated with those patches. Um, if I've got uh, 10 patches to roll out to a group of machines, which patches are more critical for more machines and which patches are less critical? The more critical ones take priority. Uh, what are the associated CVEs with, with, with those patches? You can drive uh, compliance baselines to ensure all of your endpoints are up to a standard that you set internally, or we can leverage uh, industry standards uh, like SIS or DSA-STIG or PCI. So you can say, I want all of my endpoints to have uh, passwords that, that fit with this, this compliance uh, element, um, screen savers, access to certain areas. Uh, if they haven't been on the network within 24 hours, I can take those off. We can also integrate with AV tools and self-quarantine endpoints, depending on um, what behavior is being being deployed by the endpoint. Ultimately, giving you that visibility of how compliant your endpoints are and getting them up to a standard that you and management can be happy with. Lastly, Big Fix Inventory is a granular software, in software and hardware inventory tool. So again, 
with the big fix platform you'll automatically get an understanding of uh, what software is on an endpoint what version it is because we need that to be able to patch big fix inventory gives you near real-time asset information so not just what software but how often is it used who's it used by when did they last use it how long did they use it for is it part of a contract what's the the money value behind that contract if i'm 10 licenses over licensed you know, what's the what's the unit cost towards those 10 licenses and also you can set a threshold to say report on my microsoft licensing and if i'm over licensed let me know and how much buy and then i can work out uh, where, why am i over licensed is everybody using their licenses or ultimately am i over am i under licensed and i need to i need to buy more now the use of that means that you reduce over deployment but also you've got an ability to manage your software spend like i say one big fix server can manage 250,000 endpoints globally So I've got a granular breakdown of the um, Big Fix um, OS here and also the, the ap applications, uh, the functionality we can use. So I've covered Big Fix patch already. That, that's highlighted here in the environment. Again, both Big Fix patch, uh, Big Fix patches included both Big Fix lifecycle and Big Fix compliance. Now, Big Fix life cycle is specifically for um, IT operations functionality. So you can see uh, advanced patch management for server clusters, software distribution, uh, self-service application. If you want to offer applications to users, uh, OS deployment, any kind of automation functionality if you're upgrading servers, uh, remote control and energy management of endpoints. Big Fix compliance is focused around the security element. So enforcing security and regulatory policies, creating your own configuration baselines um, and leveraging industry standards, uh, PCI, uh, USAG, BE, FDCC, um, DSA STIG and uh, SIS. Vulnerability assessment. So not just what, what patches are there, but also what vulnerabilities are associated with these patches. Uh, quarantining endpoints, AV management. Big Fix Inventory um, gives you a catalog of, at the moment, 102,000 software titles that, again, you can leverage in your, in your environment. If there's any not on that list, you can add your own but also including uh, Microsoft, Oracle, SAP. It also gives you endpoint hardware inventory, especially for virtualized technologies and allows you to do software license usage metering to understand, uh, to use the reports to see you know, what software am I using? How often am I using it? Am I over licensed? Am I under licensed? It also looks at um, ILMT, IBM's license, manage, uh, license metric tool and is up to date with a, I think this is actually more up to date than that. We've recently bought out in reaction to the current economic crisis, a work from home module, specific designed for users working from home. So that includes asset discovery. Uh, it also includes patching, includes software distribution, uh, remote control, and then the ability to enroll endpoints off the network. As I said earlier, HCL have brought out um, recent enhancements to the platform, including Big Fix Insights, which is an enhanced reporting uh, capability. 
uh, modern client management for the ability to manage your Windows 10 devices and uh, Mac OS devices like MDM tools. So that may be um, forcing policies of uh, remote wiping, locking pa uh, passcodes, uh, setting policies against endpoints. We've also got multi-cloud capability. So historically, you know, having um, a dashboard of a uh, software in, in inventory of all your endpoints for for your physical and uh, desktops and laptops and virtual environments is is one thing, but having an ability to plug in data from your cloud environments, Azure and AWS, gives you that complete catalog of everything you're using. And also recent enhancements on um, integrations with vulnerability tools. So if you want to take in feeds from uh, Qualys or Rapid7 or, or Tenable, getting a parity of data with, with those software tools is there. Um, Big Fix uses uh, open SOAP and REST APIs. So we can in really integrate with tool any tools that, 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 that utilize those APIs. Um, we have out of the box integrations with QRadar and some of the IBM tooling uh, given our history as well. So that covers um, much of the functionality. I guess my next commentary is the big fix architecture. So how does the data flow work? You know, what does the architecture look, architecture look like? So on the HCL side, we've got the big fix content cloud. So we'll take in content, and in this case, I'll use patching as an example. We'll take patching content from major vendors, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, Adobe. We'll do some first line testing on that content make sure the patch is good, run it in our systems, and then we'll send it down over the internet, down through the firewall to your big fix server. Now that the big fix server works on a subscription method. So if you only want to see data from Windows and Red Hat, you only subscribe to data from Windows from Red Hat. But if you want to see just Red Hat, CentOS and Ubuntu, again, you just subscribe to the content you want. So you're not getting content you don't need. Equally, all endpoints have a big fix agent on them and they talk back in every 15 minutes to the big fix server and use intelligence we've added to that content to understand whether that endpoint needs that content. So, for example, if um, Microsoft release a Windows patch that will be sent down to your big fix environment, then only your Windows machines will check against that patch and only Windows machines that then need that content will pull it down. So if it's Windows 10 patching, the only the Windows 10 endpoints will, will pull that content down. As a result, we get such a high pass rate because only the endpoints that need the content receive the content. Now that works with endpoints that are off the network as well. So any endpoints that are at home, again, in coffee shops, airports, you know, off the corporate VPN, talk back in over it relay in the DMZ to your big fix server. So those that users um, that are uh, you know, dark to, to the IT team still get that content. Again, their agents still talk back in every 15 minutes. Now that agent is continuously self-assessing. He's checking back in every 15 minutes to say, hi, I'm a Windows machine. Are there any more updates for me? Yes or no? If no, not a problem. If yes, it'll receive that back that update. Uh, it runs in uh, system. That that agent is minimal system impact, um, less than two percent CPU at the box, and ten meg of RAM. And has been tested over fifty six k modem for low bandwidth environments. So. Um, We've got big fix agents on uh, remote offices, um, shipping tankers. We've got some in the ISS. We've got them in the Arctic. So long as there's some method of communication back to big fix, um, you know, that agent will talk back in again. Now, one other architectural area to talk about are big fix relays. 
So these are non-dedicated uh, endpoints. So they could be a print server or an, uh, a desktop in an office designed to aggregate communication. So rather than having 10,000 endpoints all talking to the big fix server, well, we'll say that the 500 in my headquarters will talk to one relay, the 500 in another endpoint will talk to a different relay, and any endpoints that are working from home can talk to a different relay and aggregate communication down. Now, these are non-dedicated endpoints. Um, so any existing infrastructure will do, a PC, a server, a tiny machine, not a problem. I have um, a bank in the Middle East that has 100,000 endpoints and no relays, but I have an industrial company, a small industrial company in the UK that have 300 endpoints and three relays, uh, one for headquarters, one as a failover, and, and one for remote users uh, across the DMZ. Now, I guess my last comment is that data that we send down from, from Big Fix, um, we add intelligence to, uh, we call them fixlets, and it, it will be uh, the evaluation process that determines what endpoints get one set of data. Now, Big Fix does not scan, it's not a scanning tool. It does not work machine to machine. It is not reliant on WMI. It does not open multiple ports. It uses one port for all communication. Um, the endpoints are responsible for talking back to the BigFix server. And that means that if a patch comes out on a uh, patch Tuesday, so let's, let's say, you know, the day after patch Tuesday, the endpoints will talk in, pull that content down automatically without any human intervention. We have the ability to do auto patching. So rather than logging in and trying to push patches out yourself, you can set a policy that will say um, all test machines, all Windows test machines can automatically get critical content as soon as it becomes available for Microsoft. So there's uh, some content that we can quickly look at. Um, the Big Fix landing page will give you all of the documentation for Big Fix, all of the white papers for Big Fix, uh, the webinars as well, product support, and any software downloads. Um, we've got an active Big Fix forum that all the, the Big Fix users uh, contribute to if you're looking for any specific content, reporting, uh, has anybody seen this latest patch, any problems with this content. Um, we've got a developer site as well for any specific relevance or action script you may want to look for. Um, and then we have our ideas portal. If there's any enhancements you may need, uh, you can request there. Equally, and again, uh, the technical advisors are, are available for you to talk to for questions and technical support. Um, and we host the training ourselves. So that's the end of the my, my few slides. I'm going to show you a quick demo and also show you some of the content I was discussing. So this is the uh, uh, support.bigfix.com page, including the product documentation, any blogs that we're sending out, any infrastructure capacity data and data sheets you may need, any downloads you may need, uh, support data, again, easily accessible, and the Big Fix forums. Equally, any training we've created uh, that you can sign up for, masterclasses and user groups, and Big Fix webinars. Uh, here are the previous webinars. So, um, some use cases from other Big Fix users, uh, multi cloud questions in real time with the development team. Um, any round tables or, or support regarding reporting or simplifying your environment. And then upcoming, upcoming sessions, uh, how to make best use of your Windows patching. We also do um, patch content reviews uh, ahead of um, Patch Tuesday. 
so our technical team will uh, evaluate the content that's come down, tell you which is more important, anything you want to look out for, and then also any bespoke content here. So we can create bespoke content for users. Uh, the big fixed service now integration, um, again, conversation can happen. So I am going to uh, log into Big Fix for a moment. And have a look at the interface and see what see what information I can see. So I can see I've got 98 devices in my in my architecture. I've got 124 critical patches, uh, 33 software packages that I've created and uploaded. Some custom tasks that I've also created that may be uh, force a reboot on a set of machines or send a notification or a message to some machines. Uh, some baselines I've created and also current deployments that I've rolled out to a set of machines. I can also see my patching information. So how many critical patches do I have across my entire uh, OS or I can rationalize that to just Windows if I'm just a Windows admin. And I can see that's reduced down to 120. I can see what's been deployed recently, any open deployments. Perhaps I've pushed a software tool out to a machine uh, that is awaiting a reboot or hasn't come online yet because it's been uh, off or the machine's closed. Any machines that uh, have ex uh, uh, deployments that have expired, any I've stopped myself, and I can see an overview of these deployments. I can also see any new releases. So I guess yesterday was patch Tuesday. So I can see all my cumulative data uh, patches for Microsoft uh, December data and when it was released. And again, that can be filtered down if I want to see latest software or custom content. And equally, what are the members of my team doing in my environment? I can see somebody's rolled out a security update for Adobe across 11 machines. And again, I can see that my software. So that's my environment. Let's, let's take a look at the data I'm getting back from my devices. So I can see my devices here in my device list. I can also see a, a report, a summary of that information by how regularly they've reported. Uh, have they reported in the last 24 hours or a week or greater than a week or greater than a month and a breakdown, uh, a report by OS and by group. Now this will filter in real time. So if I only want to see my Windows devices, I can filter that and export that report and, and, and send it out. So in my list of devices, I can clearly see when the endpoint last spoke back in again. So if I um, filter by the last seen time, this endpoint was a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago. And if I go to page two, I'll see uh, endpoints that haven't spoken in in 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. If I want to specifically see a machine, I can target uh, this Compliant 01 machine spoken four minutes ago, and I can drill down and see data about this machine. I can see some properties that are automatically pulled back by Big Fix, uh, 26 critical vulnerabilities, uh, it last reported in four minutes ago, the OS, if there's a user aligned to this machine, and the amount of disk space. Um, the CPU, the endpoint ID, uh, the DNS, that it's a server. I can see that it's a server. I can add and remove properties if there are any there that I, I, I want to add. For example, the endpoint location. This one's hosted in AWS. I can also see if it's part of my big fix groups or my um, Active Directory groups here. Um, and I can drill down and see see some of the, the information about this specific machine. So in this machine, what patches are applicable? All patches, or I can drill down and just see critical patches or just by a release date, or again, just by security patches. Uh, 
and I can see that uh, this uh, December security rollup is applicable for this specific machine, but also applicable for five other machines. I can also see my custom content and my software packages. So that's really interesting in getting a view of uh, what information is coming back from a specific machine. But I may want to look more broadly at you know, what patching information is going on in my environment. So I can get a list of all the patches applicable in my, in my environment. Again, when they were released, uh, breakdown by OS and category. Again, this can be updated in real time. If I just want to see my Windows machines. So this is a bit more interesting because I can see uh, the patch, but also the number of endpoints. If I drill down on this patch, I can see the 10 devices that are vulnerable, uh, that it's, uh, the patch is required for, also information from the vendor. So it's a Microsoft uh, software product that could affect my system. There are known issues. Endpoints may report back as pending restart. Ensure any, any notes from the vendor and also the KB number. I can also see the release date if it was modified, the size, the KB number again, and any CVs associated um, with this patch. I can drill down to my vulnerable devices. And if I want to, I can deploy that patch out to my environment. Pick my devices, again, filter down by perhaps a group, uh, maybe just a test group, or breakdown by OS. And then decide the parameters of which I'd like to deploy that content. Now, I may want to deploy that patch right now to my machines, or I may say, I want to deploy this patch over the weekend. So I can say right from, from Saturday afternoon um, through till a week Saturday, I want to try pushing that patch out. Uh, what time zone do I want to deploy that? Do you want to stagger my deployment? Um, if it's a large patch over a number of hours, um, send it as an action to an endpoint or an offer. And then how, how do I want to manage that? If I ask an endpoint, hi, please accept the patch, and the user does not accept the patch, I can set a deadline of an hour, and after that deadline, it will automatically run that patch. Uh, very important if you're pushing critical content out. I can offer it down. I can download the required files first, and then install the patch within my patch window, or force a restart. And then I get an overview of that information. So that's a quick overview of how to patch. It's exactly the same process if I were to be looking to uh, roll out software. I can pick um, some, uh, Chrome in here. I can see it's applicable for 40 devices. I can have a look at what's entailed with that with that content. Uh, it's got my install task or my uninstall task. I can edit the software, export the software again, and I can see um, how I want to manage that, that, that information. I did cover my ability to do auto patching. So here I've created a um, suspended auto patch and it will give me some understanding of the content I'm gonna automatically roll out as soon as it's available from in this case, Microsoft. So uh, all critical patches, all important critical patches for WinOS, uh, excluding Adobe, it refreshes on a weekly basis, it's security patches, it's OS patches for Windows 10. And I can see which endpoints are attributed to um, 
this policy I've created. In this case, it's a set of, of Windows endpoints, but I can again change that to whatever test bed I want to use. And I can change my schedule on how I'd like to deploy that content out. And what I want to do if the patch doesn't, doesn't deploy. And I can also see uh, what patches that includes. So Big Fix automatically understands if patches are superseded rather than trying to roll out uh, July, August, September, October, November, and December content. If they're superseded, it'll only deploy the latest, latest patches, or in this case, applicable patches. There we go. I can see what patches are new. Okay, these are all my uh, December ones and ones I've also excluded from this. Um, and well, I don't have any Adobe in here, but if I had Adobe, ah, I've got some Adobe patches in here as well. Um, I've also got the ability to do query my endpoints on the fly. So if I wake up on Monday morning and I see there is a specific vulnerability or dubious executable in my environment, I can have a look for that application. In this case, I'm looking for Firefox. I can target my devices. And then I can run that request looking for Firefox against my environment and it will pull back in real time. It will talk to the endpoints in real time. And as you can see, that is loading. These computers don't have it. Uh, some of these will be um, Linux machines, so it won't be won't be looking for it. But again, I get these out of the box, or I can I can create my own uh, content if I'm looking for socket information, uh, MD5 hashes of specific endpoints, um, any device specific or network specific um, scripts, and I get some inbuilt reporting as well. So that concludes uh, the demo element. Um, I've, with the time I've had, I've tried to cover patching, software distribution, kind of the day-to-day -day running, but also the data you see uh, from the big fix agent, again, that feeds back into the environment every 15 minutes. So you know as soon as there is a uh, potential audit or uh, vulnerability or, or patch content needs to be applied, you get that that information is in near real time. Again, it's not scan based. It only uses one port for the entire platform. So it keeps things nice and secure. And again, once you've got the big fix server enabled, if you want to roll out uh, inventory uh, in the future, again, not a problem, no additional content. You just uh, pay for the inventory licensing and uh, pull that content down from HCL. Uh, so, uh, given the opportunity, I could show you Big Fix Inventory or Big Fix Compliance, uh, but my um, presentation window is is nearly up. So, I think I'll conclude my session there. Thank you very much. Ben, спасибо вам большое за выступление. Ben, thank you so much for this talk. Особенно хочу поблагодарить за презентацию, именно слайд со ссылками и контактными данными. Я думаю, что она будет очень полезна для наших слушателей. Especially, I would like to thank you for your slide with links and contact information. I think it will be very useful for those who are listening to us now. У нас нет вопросов от наших слушателей. Все было прекрасно. Спасибо вам огромное еще раз. So far, we don't have any questions. I think everything was very clear. So thank you once again. Thank you very much. Да, и мы сейчас отправляемся на небольшой перерыв, но у нас еще есть одна сессия. Не пропустите. Now we will have a small break, but still we have one more talk uh, in the future, so don't miss it. <laughs>